Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'll be your host this evening. My name is Michael McKeever. Let's say hello to our panelists. First up, we have South Florida theater icon, actress, and writer, Miss Iris Acker. Next, we have the award-winning actress, Karen Stevens. And last but certainly not least, we have arts journalist, critic, and founder of Florida Theater on Stage, Mr. Bill Hurstman. Welcome, panel. Before we meet our, uh, our guest today, we've got a clip that we'd like you to take a look at. Enjoy. Great stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Julie Rowe, the Director of Education at the Malt Jupiter Theater. Julie, welcome. Thank you for having me. Really impressive stuff we just took a look that at. That was fun. It, it was, was fun for me to watch it, and it see once great. again. Excellent. <laughs> so tell us about the conservatory. Tell us uh, what we need to know about this amazing school program that you have there. Well, the conservatory, it's very important for us that we have opportunities for kids of all ages. So our programming begins with students who are in kindergarten and goes all the way up to grade 12. And then we also have our professional training program for students who are training to be in the industry. So our programming begins at 8.30 in the morning for our professional training program students. And then our after school track begins at 3.30 and continues until 8.30 at night. Ooh. Wow. It's exciting. It's always busy. <laughs> and it's, um, it's, we are year round. We are not seasonal. So uh, when school's out, we're very busy. We serve over 600 students a year. And um, we have kids who are excited about being in the profession. And then we also have kids who are exploring and just trying something new. And it's well, important. What's your curriculum? Our curriculum is everything in dance. We have ballet, tap, modern, jazz. We have master classes, workshops, acting classes, voice lessons, guitar lessons. And we also have the ability to bring in our artists from down the hall who are coming to do our shows at the Malt Stupider Theater. And they come down and give master classes as well. They visit with our training program students. And we're also always, it's important to me also to continue to survey the students to say, look, I think this is fun, but you know, I'm not 12, so obviously, <laughs> so what would be fun for you? So I'm always trying to serve them on what they would like to be doing as well as, of course, making sure that the parameters and benchmarks are being hit. Nice. It's such a huge program. How big of a staff do you have? Well, we have um, two full-time people and one part-time people, but one person, pardon me. <laughs> and then we also have um, 18 teaching artists on staff. Wow. 18. And what's exciting there, I think it's very important that our teaching artists are still in the community. They're auditioning, they're performing because they're still in the industry and when they can bring that to the craft and the teaching as well. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's funny because um, in, in too many uh, different uh, academic situations, you have teachers who have been teaching forever mm -hmm. and are just a little bit out of tune of what's happening, happening uh, currently in theater. I would agree. I think it's really important because the, when you're out and you're working, then you have so much to bring to the classroom, but then the students can also come and see you in action as well. And I also think that I know, but my teaching makes me a better artist as well because if I can come into a classroom and I can talk to an eighth grader about making really positive choices in an acting moment, then that makes me dwell, boil it down. It helps me artistically, so it just feeds and feeds and feeds. Sure, it makes sense. It's, you, it, as you're explaining it to the student, yeah. you're working it out for yourself sure. as well. And I have to be clear and I have to be specific. And if, when I see that aha moment for them, then it's exciting for me. And when my singers have an understanding of what placement is, and that's exciting for me as well. So I got a great job. Nice. I mean, like, that was so professional. I just said to you, are they teenagers? Yeah. But I saw that. They are teenagers. Those are all students in grades 6 through 12. And, you know uh, what was exciting about that? I interrupted you. I apologize. <laughs> but what was exciting about that is our June production, we, on the first day, they come in and we have auditions for the kids for placement. And then we start rehearsing. And by the end of our ninth day, we're in designer run. Wow. So it's quick. Whoa. It's quick. 
Wow. And then we put them on stage on the first day of week three and incorporate professional designers and our musicians are in. Mm -hmm. So it's a fast process, but it's they're sponges. They just go but with it. But it's a lot of work. Did, do I not mm -hmm. remember that you only have a very abbreviated actual performance schedule? We do. Why is that? Because you do so much work with these people. You know, that is a goal for my, a long range goal for me <laughs> is to have a, a much more expanded time for performance. It's just really number of seats and amount of time I have to do our shows. I mean, it's a great problem to have that we're starting to burst at the seams right now, but it's also, we're bursting at the seams right now, so hopefully we're, we're in the midst of a capital campaign to expand us. But this year, for the first time, we're offering a conservatory subscription, so parents can subscribe to Seasons. So mm -hmm. that front loads our sales, nice. and I'm hoping that eventually we'll have a week or two run. Wouldn't mm -hmm. that be fun? Yeah. It would be great. What does a student have to do to get into the conservatory? What are the requirements? And um, I know that there's, uh, there's a charge. Mm -hmm. for, um, so this back end of the question is, what about students who can't afford that? Well, first thing, all you need to do is walk in the door okay. and say, hey, I want to be a part of what you do and mm -hmm. we make it happen. 25% okay. of our students are with us on scholarship. I'm very fortunate that I have some very active donors who are really excited about what we do. And if someone wants to be a part of us, we make it work because arts education is important for wow. everyone. Wow. You know, it changes everyone's lives. And everyone's life is changed by everyone who's in the ensemble. So if someone has a desire and just if they have no experience, that's okay. If you have 10 years of ballet, great. Come on in, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the space itself, I don't know if my yeah. panel has seen it. That's a magnificent space you have for classes. It's exciting, it's exciting. Wow. When, I, when I remember when I interviewed for my position and I came through the, the conservatory and I remember thinking, look at all this possibility, you know? <laughs> yes. So uh, we do have a very large dance studio, which is literally just down the hall from our stage. So when we're in production, we just totter down the hall and off we go. And we have an acting studio that also has proper sprung wood floors, so we're able to dance in there. Um, a voice studio with a music library. We also have a kitchenette area for those kids who are with us a lot, which is convenient windows so I can make sure there's no shenanigans going on. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and a cookie jar in my office in case we need some, you know. How's your day? Here's a cookie. <laughs> your students all want to be performers? Well, not necessarily. Uh -huh. You know, some of them want to be stage managers. Some of them want to be designers. Good. Absolutely. Oh. So we have an internship uh, program. So if a student wants to learn how to run sound, we make that happen. Actually, we have a project that we do every summer called the Youth Artist Chair, where students apply to be a part of it. And every department of the play is headed up by a student who's being mentored by a professional. So student produced, designed, marketed, all of it. This is so great really because cool. there's so many um, programs mm -hmm. focused mainly on performance. Mm -hmm. So it's great that you've seen beyond that and, and yeah. offer the opportunities for people who want to work um, behind the scenes. I, yeah. met, I met one of those students uh, this past year uh, who was a Pathfinder nominee. Oh, and yay. she had been one of your student, uh, what do you call them? Uh, youth artist, uh, you, one of our interns. Yes, yes, and she team. had uh, directed a, a, it. Was uh, Kara, wasn't it? Yes, yes. And she, the the excitement that she exuded about what she does and what she did there at at uh, the Malt, and what she wants for her future was. It, it was real. It was off the charts. Oh, it was yay. Very impressive, and she was very impressive. She did an awesome else job. Who does it? Yeah. Any other theater, any other conservatory no, thing? Know. Well, you know, Jones. when you, you give the kids, when you, what's exciting too is that we, I try to choose plays for that program that are challenging. So, and this last year we did The Diary of Anne Frank. Last year we did Rhinoceros, which was so exciting. Wow. wow. Right? Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> the kids just ate it up. They were so excited. The, and actually, we, it's amazing you're yeah. doing. I mean, I was going to say, wait, 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 what? Rhinoceros? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's heady stuff for adults. Like, yeah. you know, teenagers, well, when we were yeah. reading it, we were sitting around reading it, and we got to page 19, and we stopped and talked about page 19 for 45 minutes. Uh, it was so fun. Wow. But um, they're very when you hand it over and you say, I don't know, what do you think? And then off they go and they problem solve, they communicate, they have to learn to work together, they have to come together with one united vision. And I just come in and say, I don't know, drop, and then I sit back and drink my coffee. Oh, and that's great. 
you know. But isn't that what the best teachers do? I think so. I think so to be able to kind of see, okay, I'm seeing like a little ting over here, and if you could <laughs> kind of come over and go and get that in there. You know but what you've got, um, am, am I, uh, I'm a little fuzzy, but don't I often open up a uh, playbill for a main stage adult production, mm -hmm. and don't I see conservatory student, conservatory student? Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. So what's wonderful too is that every year we do have auditions for students in our uh, in our theater. It's called First Step to Stardom, where we open doors to, for kids to come in and be a part of the main stage shows. And some of our students are in those, but it's op it's open. You don't have to be a student in our school to be a, a part of that as well. But it just gives students an opportunity to be a part of a professional theater production. They can earn some EMC points just learn the lesson of being in the rehearsal hall with all those professionals and have mm. a big master class for free for you know eight, nine weeks. That's mm. fantastic. So it that's a fantastic. really nice opportunity. Yeah, that's <laughs> got to be very exciting for them. How do you balance your own professional career yeah. with being the head of uh, education at the Malt Theater? Well, I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a, for coffee. Yeah, and I have a couple of cats. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, I just really try to be aware of what's happening in South Florida and to be aware of what my fellow artists are doing so that I can be aware and apprised, but also what's happening in, you know, in, in our nation. And I think it's important for me to continue to put myself out and to continue to audition and continue to on that path of artistry so that I can communicate effectively with the kids about it. Um, it is a balance, but mm -hmm. I also then just pick when you know, when is my busy time at the conservatory and when is best for me and when is best for the school. And I'm very fortunate the entire staff of the theater is very supportive of me when I have a project that I'm able to be a part of. Everyone comes and is very kind. So. Well, the fact that you're a very fine actress also helps that. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you. There's your five dollars. <laughs> I think that every teacher should have had the opportunity to perform. Yeah. I think it is so important. Mm -hmm. Um, I personally think everybody should take an acting class. I agree with you. Because <laughs> everything you learn in acting class applies to any job you are in. You have to learn to speak, you have to learn to stand up properly, you have to be able to breathe properly, communicate, meet a deadline. Opening night is opening night. We don't push back. <laughs> you know? Decision so, making. That's right. Choices. Collaboration. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say, working with others, sure. Yes, mm -hmm. effective reading, all of those critical thinking skills that you learn in acting class, mm -hmm. you can do everywhere. But it's also, it's nice that, and I think you were alluding to this, to have a professional, have them working with professionals that have been out in the real world so that yeah. there's some, I don't know if they're conservatories, but there's some acting classes that are taught to kids by people who haven't been out in the real world in a long time. Mm -hmm. And they can't, if they want to become professionals, they don't have any exposure to the realities. You can tell them you know, what's expected of a professional as opposed to someone who just wants to get out and vent. Agreed, agreed. And um, I also try to incorporate uh, rules from Actors' Equity so they have an understanding of this is the <coughs> rehearsal process, these are the rehearsal hours, mm -hmm. these are expectations of actors. Uh, and we also, my professional training program, which is, which is new, mine, listen to me, <laughs> our. <laughs> <laughs> We launched it in August of 2015, and our first class just graduated. And mm -hmm. they're the reason we're conservatory, because they are conservatory track training. And I really am very adamant about work ethic with them, especially because they are making performing their career choice. And I want to make sure that when they go out, they're the people everyone wants to work with. But they also have a realistic expectation that when they graduate, I want them to be prepared as artists but more importantly, just as human beings, so that their spiritual and emotional life is just as prepared as their artistry. Mm -hmm. so. You know, it's missing. I used to teach a class uh, on um, courtroom dramatics mm -hmm. uh, for the attorneys. It was a fluke. I haven't seen anybody <clears throat> actually give classes on that, because what I was doing was coaching. It just started with one, and then one told the next attorney, told the next attorney. And they were mostly just recent graduates, so it was something else. But wouldn't that be interesting to have? Uh, uh, we did a, a class, a class. We did a taping at one of the high schools here, mm -hmm. and we interviewed the students, and we asked them, "Why are you taking this class?" <laughs> one of them simply because he wanted to be a doctor, and he said he wanted to have 
bedside manner. He really <laughs> wanted to. Others attorneys, just for business. In that class, I was 50-50. Hmm. Only 50% of them actually wanted to perform. So uh, what you're doing is more geared for performance. Agreed. But I'm with you on the, what you were just mentioning. I also partner with Palm Beach Philanthropy Tank. And it's a new organization in the last couple of years where I go in and th the basis of that project is that students are applying to pitch their ideas to philanthropists for their nonprofit idea. So for oh. a project for homelessness or a project to help with kids with cancer. And I come in and I help them with their voice and speech so that they learn how to present and how to effectively present and how to be confident and how to use a microphone, how to use the stage. Oh, that's so important. Yes. How to use a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> and how to make the sound guy mad. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with you that those skills are really, really necessary. I, I have to say, this, this, the whole program sounds amazing. What, is there an age cap? Can, is, can a, a middle-aged playwright apply for this? Um, Come on! Come on down! <laughs> because it really, it I'm sounds... I'm a middle-aged actor. I'm there. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> talk about some of the other outreach programs that you that you um well, one of the things I'm really quite excited about is our student matinee series, where we bus children in uh, throughout the school year to bring them in to see a show. So and a lot of them are there for the first time, and any student who comes who's from a Title I school or on the free and reduced lunch program is admitted at no cost. So we try to make those as accessible as possible. We can have, depending on the schedule, we'll have anywhere from two to 4,000 kids a year wow. coming to see a show on our stage. And you can feel the excitement when they come in and everyone's in their matching shirt from their school and excited when they come in and go, wow. So Yeah, it's very important. I mean, I still remember being bused to performances at the Royal Pointiana when mm -hmm. I was in high school. It's something that I'll never forget. Because right. it's one of those things that spurred me towards, um, you know, a career in a the theater. Yeah. I grew up on a farm in Idaho. There was nothing like this where I'm from. So we're in nothing. And the very first play I saw was Othello at Idaho State University. I vividly remember I was down in the I was in the center and I remember vividly, oh so you know, there was no busing kids in from the farm to see shows. But well, you know. how did you get into education and conservatory leadership from being essentially a performer? Well, I've always, throughout my career, I've always taught like piano lessons or guitar lessons, voice lessons in between contracts. Uh -huh. And it just kind of then grew to do residencies for theaters that I was working at in the schools or community organizations. Uh -huh. And I, before I came to Jupiter, I was living in St. Petersburg and I was the director of education at American Stage Theater Company there. Mm -hmm. I did some work in development. And I felt like I wanted to, I did some outreach work there as well. And then this job came available and it just kind of happened to fall into place, you know? I always feel that uh, as an artist, it's my obligation to continue to give to others, especially because you know, I'm a kid from you know, Southeast Idaho where there was very little opportunity and my mother just made everything happen for me. Mm. We spent a lot of time in the car on the interstate. <laughs> so yeah, it's very, very important for me to continue to give to others who may not have that access and to make sure that if someone really wants to know about the arts, then it's my obligation as an artist to help. So what inspired you? Did you go to the theater? Did you, uh, in I, Southeast Idaho? Yes. What inspired you? Well, I was a piano piano player as a kid. I started playing piano okay. when I was six, and that was really fun. And um, then I started to play guitar, and then I started singing. And one of the great things I was able to do was I, when I was, who knew that my voice teacher would happen in American Falls, Idaho? She was this very, she was an opera diva, you know, <laughs> with her false eyelashes and her Siamese cat and her caftan. <laughs> <laughs> I know! It's, I'm not making it up! So, and I was able to, <laughs> I learned a lot from her, but I was able to accompany all the voice students. So, I would sit and play for all the voice students every Monday and just listen to her teach and learn all that material. And that was a real gift. But I, I went to, I took an acting class on a whim when I went to college. And, oh, there was these, there was my people and my mm. teacher was, oh, that she was, was it. she was wonderful. It was my first that teacher. Was Isn't that wonderful when you mm -hmm. find your home? Yeah, it's my tribe, there yeah. they were. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> look at this, I'm, I'm home. I do, I'm not that, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, right, there's more of me. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> what do you feel is the most valuable uh, uh, thing or quality that you can or have imparted to um, a young artist? I think it's important for us to take care of each other. When we're in the process together, we, are all, we all matter and everyone in the room must support and care for one another. Doesn't matter if you're doing a giant musical, if you're doing a one person play, everyone in the room matters and supports and takes care of one another always. That's great. That's a that's philosophy right. we should apply to professional theater as well. <laughs> as yeah, opposed to just, I yeah. I think it's automatic. Yeah. You automatic, you become a family, you know, yeah. every time. Yeah. Every, you, yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of the feeling that we, we do say that in, in the school at the Malt Distributor Theater, too, is, you know, you're part of the family. Families fight. we got to talk it out. So <laughs> here we go. We're going to make it happen. And so we figure it out and move forward. And I'm very, very excited to see the work ethic of the kids, how they do take care of one another and how they do honor the craft and take it very seriously. And then their parents, too, and how it just emanates and emanates and emanates. Well... Oh, no, I, I was just going to make a comment, you know, that, that children will meet your expectations, whether they're yeah. low or high. Absolutely. So when there are high expectations and, and kids recognize what kind of environment it is and what's expected of them, they will meet those they expectations. They absolutely will. You're right. You're right. right. And it's good to know that at, at a young age, you're instilling these values into these kids, that yeah. you're teaching them these, these guidelines that, that they need to, to work with yeah. if they're going to work in a professional environment. Yeah. And I'm, what's, my, my office is kind of in the back of the school, so I, I can hear and all and see it all. So I can hear them in class. I can hear them in the lobby. And, and I, when I hear something click and you can hear, you can see something hit, it's really just, it's very rewarding. Yeah. Nice. What's, yeah. what's the difficult part? What's the part that you think most people that are watching this show don't quite know, that you always wish you could go out in the mall and shake people by the uh, shoulders and go, this is what you don't know about what we do? It's not about being a celebrity or a star. So we can't expect our, we, we shouldn't put our young people with the expectation of, of being down front and being the center and being the lead. That's not what it is. Mm -hmm. It's about telling the story correctly. That's what it's about. How often do you have to tell that to people? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've had some of those conversations. I, I suspect you know, so. And, and why that's not helpful and what a better choice of word would be, um, and how to cherish everything the child is, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have one important question. Are you teaching them that when they become professionals, and even as in the current, you know, uh, current incarnation that they are now, to, to turn their phones off at half hour? Oh, <laughs> I take the children's phone when they come to class. I take their phones away. I yeah. mean, you'd be surprised yeah. that, uh, no. you know, back in the day, we actors, we didn't have to worry about that kind right. of thing in yeah. the dressing room after half hour. But now it's just, uh, Agree. you no. know, yeah. No, I, I literally take their phones away when they come for rehearsal. And when we do go as a group to say to see shows in the area, I stand up in front of the entire group and I say, show me your phones, turn them Ooh. off, which they do. Excellent. And I find them if they don't. Mm. Well done. <laughs> well done. Can you do that to the regular audiences as well? <laughs> that would be nice. I can Let start working on that. Yeah. I'll keep you posted how it <laughs> but, but I do also have the rule that when students go off into the profession, I don't care how big they get or where they get, they will take my phone call. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. You do encourage them to go on and to make sure they oh, go yes. on to higher learning. Absolutely. And don't just go to New York or something. Oh, yeah. So and I, we always say, you know, it's important for you to fly away and figure out your own personal aesthetic. You know, what is your personal viewpoint? And choose that, you know, people, artists make lives all over the world. So choose the place that makes you happy as a human being and your artistry will happen. Well, that's really great advice. Yeah. It really is. Julie, for, for people who are watching uh, the show right now and are wondering, how do I get my, um, what, what do, how do I do this? How do I get my kid uh, into the malls? Uh, malls where do Jupiter I go? Theater. Do I? That's important too. They know it's in Jupiter. Yes, we're in Jupiter. Um, you can visit our website. And what would that be? JupiterTheater.org and TheaterRETheatrical.org. You can visit our website. You can give us a call. 
you can come on down. We have students who come and visit and see class just for the fun of it, to and see it, if it's a good fit. And if folks just call the Malt Jupiter uh, Theater, the box office, they'll be able to get redirected to yes. the education the department. The conservatory phone number is, can I give that? 561-575-2672. Excellent. Uh, here's a question, too, and because we're running out of time, so I, want, I think it's important that we uh, address this, too. In a, in, a, in a couple of sentences, what would you like the, um, the viewing public to know about your conservatory, about the school? What, what people gain from it? What, what, what your students walk away with? I know that a, a portion of our students are tracking for the industry. I know that this, that's just going to happen. But what's most important for us in our philosophy of teaching is that we're helping all of our students self-actualize into the true and honest person that they're meant to be. And in, by turn, they'll be making better readers and leaders and team players, better members of our community. That's what's most important to us. Yes. There you all go. Right. <laughs> I, and you could just tell the... Uh, the joy that you have just in talking about the, the conservatory. I, I could just imagine the energy that's in that space, in those, those classrooms. It's a little loud. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It is. It's always very fun. There's some, some days when it's so busy, I have to literally, I have this mantra. I open my office door and I say, make a path, make a path. I have to get <laughs> but someone like, just that's this great. past weekend, one of our graduates came back to visit just to say hello, and the other kids that knew him were so inspired and excited to see him. It's it's, it's exciting to watch them grow and to be, you know, truly be the wonderful human being they're meant to be. And it's been very exciting having you here. Thank I, I you. knew you were going to be an amazing guest, and oh. you, you are. Well, thank you. So <laughs> thank you so much, Julie Rowe. My pleasure. Thank you to the panelists, and thank you for joining us in this episode of Spotlight on the Arts. If you want to know what's going on in any South Florida theater, you can always go to floridatheateronstage.com. For Spotlight on the Arts, I'm Michael McKeever. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.